All right, guys, 16.3 just got announced. Um, many of you were begging for a shorter workout, and you got it. 16.3 um, is 10 snatches at 75 and 55 pounds and three bar muscle ups. It's going to last seven minutes, and you're going to do a lot of reps, specifically if bar muscle ups are in your wheelhouse. And we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video on how to approach it strategy wise. Um, but I do believe that there will be a lot of brutes that are able to put up a obnoxiously high score as uh, I know that we've got a lot of uh, bodyweight ninjas out there and that Nick Sorrell has turned you guys into gymnastics freaks. So um, I hope to see some really high scores on the leaderboard coming from our community. Um, in regards to prep and preparation for this workout specifically, one, you need to go check out the video and watch those guys go through it. It's short and it's definitely worth it to see how their bodies respond under the stimulus of the load. Um, you'll note that if you kind of ref for the video, Sean came out a little more reserved than Nick and it kind of paid off its dividends the latter part of the workout as they kind of transitioned from who was leading at the time. Um, another thing is that specifically to the bar muscle up, uh, Sean had a great strategy in regards to starting each rep behind the bar. He literally utilized a glide kip action to get over that bar every time. We'll provide you guys with a link to a video um, that Nick Sorrell has already provided us through some skill work. Um, so hopefully that's something that you guys have practiced. If you haven't, become familiar with what it looks like. Obviously the only limiting factor to a traditional gliding kip where the toes might break the plane of the bar, we got to keep those toes under the bar so your reps all count. Um, for a warm up for this workout, uh, you definitely want to elevate your heart rate and we're looking at something above 10 minutes. We definitely want to start some kind of some kind of single modality, maybe row, maybe bike. I personally prefer a row for a workout like this because I know that my hamstrings and my lower back are going to take the brunt of the load um, in regards from the barbell work. So I like to get those muscles really warmed up and firing. For me specifically, it might look like 30 seconds on at a high pace, 30 seconds off at a lower pace, or complete rest for maybe 10 rounds. Um, enough to break the seal, get a sweat going, and feel like I'm out of breath. Um, and then after that, I'll recover a little bit. And then make sure that you guys are actually opening up the front of your body. I know that your posterior chain will actually feel a lot of this, but um, the tighter that the muscles are on the front of our body, the more of a struggle it will be for us to force them open uh, to reach that full extension of the hip. So I want to provide you guys with a suggested cow stretch up here. Um, make sure that either you're finding it against the wall, or we've also had videos from week one and week two that are very similar to a cow stretch just with your knee on a bench, um, a little bit easier to access some range of motion in that hip. Um, another thing to consider is obviously shoulder and lat uh, mobility and preparation. So really make sure that you guys are doing any kind of lat mobility to open up that shoulder joint as possible. Obviously we're going to be doing a lot of swinging from the bar. Um, being able to tap in the full extended position uh, in the load under the bar to make sure that we're able to engage and pull back and get all the way over that bar is going to be big. If you guys are fighting to free up some space every rep, it's definitely going to get more difficult as the workout goes on and you have less energy. So. Do what we can to free up some space in those shoulders and lats. Um, again, we can provide you guys with a few videos or links to that, those specific stretches uh, in, in the video uh, surrounding some of this information. Um, another thing I want to talk about is hand care. So um, we've been hanging from something three weeks straight. If you asked me for a prediction, I didn't think that we would be going in the direction of hanging again, whether it be rings or bar. Um, but here we are, and it's something that we're forced to adapt to. So I would definitely encourage you guys to use some kind of hand protection, whether that's tape, whether that is uh, wraps that you consistently go to. Again, try not to switch something up too uh, drastically. So if you don't normally wear wraps, don't wear wraps. If you don't normally tape, don't tape. Go to what works for you, but what's going to conserve your hands for these seven minutes. Um, especially those of you that are preparing for something greater than the open and have regionals in your, uh, in your hindsight. We need to keep our training consistent throughout the rest of the weekend. So make sure that you consider not, not losing much skin or keeping it very minimal uh, throughout this workout. Um, in regards to a specific warm-up after you go through the uh, joint prep and just a, just a generic uh, airflow warm-up for your lungs, I've got 15 banded good mornings. You choose the, the low to the band, how hard it's going to be, but we want to definitely get some blood flow into that low back and those hamstrings. 10 kipping swings from the bar. Again, start small, make it more drastic throughout the rounds as we go, obviously priming yourself to get ready to go over the bar for the bar muscle-up practice. And then I've just got five snatches at an empty barbell weight. And I would like for you guys to already start practicing the snatches in such a way that it's going to be the same way that you do it in the workout. So if you have in your mind that you're going to muscle snatch the reps, then muscle snatch the warm-up reps. If you're going to power snatch, let's just start even from here with that empty bar that we were continuing to build uh, that consistent neuromuscular pattern that is going to take place in the workout. Then it's just more reaction and less thinking. Um, 
In regards to strategy for this workout, you notice I wrote grip up here with a few explanation or exclamation points. It's going to get very grippy very quickly. Um, and you will experience that after you go even just through the first round of uh, the 10 snatches and then hanging from your body weight from the bar. Um, I wrote up here suicide, not to meant to actually go kill yourself in this workout because seven minutes is going to be a lot longer than most people anticipate. Um, I would encourage you to kind of attack this at the intensity that you would a 2K row. It's not quite an all-out sprint like a 500 meter pace, but it is surely uncomfortable from the beginning, but it needs to be something that is sustainable. These workouts are going to go to the highest scoring athletes that can just sustain a pace that allows them to keep moving throughout. Um, so there will be no holdups, there will be no misreps. Um, there's not going to be a ton of time hopping down to shake out your arms. It's quick transitions, um, very little transition time in regards to wasted movement. Uh, and then you kind of make sure that you just have that energy conservation early on in the first two minutes so that you can play it out for the rest of the five. Um, cool. So with the suicide grip more specifically, I'm referring to actually how you hold the bar. Um, this is something that I put into practice back when we did the, uh, the snatch double under workout. The weight's light enough for me to muscle snatch the entire workout. Um, if you have to power snatch it, you might have to go with a traditional hook grip. But something to experiment with is literally a suicide grip with your thumbs laid over top of the bar. Pick that bar up, flash it over your head, lock it out. Um, it surely can serve my forearms for the jump rope. So I'm assuming that it will be a similar stimulus to the bar muscle up. Um, so try to put that into practice. Again, if you've never done it, spend some time with your skill work before your workout. It shouldn't be too much to ask of your grip or your body to transition with 75 and 55 pounds. It shouldn't be something that sends you completely out of your comfort zone. Um, so be willing to give that a try. And then I broke us into two categories here. Obviously within the brew community, we've got guys that are literally training for the CrossFit Games that are gonna finish at the top of the region in the open. And then we've got athletes that are experiencing the open for the very first time, um, a lot of those in our compete group. And so um, we've got not wheelhouse over here and wheelhouse over here. Wheelhouse referring to the fact that like you saw this workout, saw bar muscle ups and was like, yes, this is my time to shine. Um, if that is you, for you coming out the gate, pacing is key. Again, I suggest the suicide grip. You'll be looking to goal your snatches unbroken the entire workout. Obviously, if bar muscle ups are not a limiting factor for you, we don't need to worry about you being too fatigued to knock out three reps. So for you, a big key is try that suicide grip to save your forearms. Don't come out too fast. Think minimizing transition time, but also not being rushed. Watch that video again of these two uh, fighting out through that workout. Nick, in the beginning of this workout, is like literally running between the barbell and the, uh, the bar muscle ups, and I, I, I do believe that that's a pace that's sustainable for maybe a few of the athletes that are going to finish in the top five in the world of the score. Um, but for the most part, just quick, um, purpose-driven transitions where you're not really wasting time, but you're also not, not too hasty. You're not kind of rushing yourself to that bar um, is key. So make sure that you're applying that as best you can. Um, for the purpose of you guys that are not wheelhouse, so that means you heard bar muscle-ups and you were like, oh my gosh. I can't do a bar muscle up, or I've never done a bar muscle up, or I don't even know if I can, I don't know if I can do more than two rounds of this. This might be a workout where I literally do 10 reps and I just stand at that bar trying to get them. Um, one, I would encourage you to use as many resources as you can in the next three or four days, maybe spend some time practicing, uh, browse our group material, uh, browse Nick Sorrell's um, Instagram page, it's actually a great resource of some short clips that can be very educational on how to get yourself over the bar in a variety of ways. Um, so potentially, if it's not just an absolute strength limitation, but more of a skill, get that into practice. Like practice that, make it habitual, do the best that you can um, with hopefully progressing yourself to a bar muscle up so you get through at least one round of this workout. But what I want you to consider if you know that it's going to be a complete struggle for you on that bar, uh, to break up your snatches. There's really no reason for you to go gun ho and do 10 unbroken snatches immediately and then go to the, to the bar to just stand there. Right? So think about conserving energy by breaking it up. We saw a lot of people put up obnoxiously high scores in the workout with these light snatches and double unders in years past that broke them out, broke them up right out of the gate. And myself was included in that. Um, I think we had to do 15 and 15 snatches and 30 double unders and every round I did eight and seven. And that was like one of my best open finishes ever and it conserved my grip and it, and it helped me conserve energy for the long term of that workout. So consider this, you surely won't lose uh, a lot of time with just dropping the bar a couple times as long as you're kind of babysitting it to the ground and not letting it get carried away with how many bounces it takes or how many breaths you take between your sets. Um, and then another thing is obviously um, understand what the glide kip is and how it can help you. Um, utilizing the glide kip is going to allow you to use momentum to get yourself over that bar versus just your body's ability to be pulled over that bar from your own strength. So if you guys can kind of look at that, um, again, we're going to provide a link for you guys 
it's going to show a great example of what that looks like. But a lot of times, to set yourself in the best position here, um, I wouldn't suggest this for most gymnastics movements, but for this one, we're looking to get you guys to start like maybe four to six inches behind the bar, maybe even a little more for some of you, and actually jump into the bar so that you start with that initial swing forward or sweep forward of momentum. Um, if you were just about to do a ton of kipping reps right after that, you would feel out of control, but because we want to use that forward momentum to help you into your first rep of bar muscle-ups, it will help you get some momentum going into the second and the third if you're looking to link them together. Um, an option is if you have bar muscle-ups but you know you run away quickly from them or it's something that doesn't last very long, consider doing singles. Um, so one glide kip at a time uh, can get a lot of work done and then seven minutes, guys, like I said earlier, is going to last a lot longer than a lot of athletes are expecting. Those guys came out the gate cooking with grease. Um, they knocked out three rounds, I think, close to 90 seconds, so they were going around in about 30 seconds um, out, the, out the gate, but uh, Sean ended up winning the workout and just barely um, beginning his 11th round. So he was unable to sustain that pace. And uh, much of the work obviously was limited by their ability to do bar muscle up. So utilize any of these suggestions that you feel like are gonna help you score better in 16.3 and realize that it's each man and woman's race to run on your own. Um, don't be, uh, don't be so tempted to keep up with your peers when you know that you're not at their level on bar muscle ups. And also, don't be so afraid to go for the gold if you know that body weight movements are something that's in your wheelhouse. Try the suicide grip if you never have. And uh, have fun and go hard at this workout, guys. I hope to see you on the leaderboard.